Don't mind my food and my mess. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better. And if not, we always have tomorrow and tomorrow will be better. In today's video, we're gonna be going over RIT and this college. A lot of you have been asking me questions about what the college is like, pros and cons, what living here is like, especially in the dorms. So today I'm gonna be going over a whole bunch of things related to that. As many of you know, I am a freshman at RIT. I live in the dorms and I've been living here for my first semester as well as my second semester. And I've lived in the same building for both. And I also have a roommate. So I know a bit about living in the dorms and what it's like to actually live on campus. So, okay. So first things first is living with a roommate. I only have one other roommate. We have pretty good space in our room considering the shape of ours. There's two kinds of rooms in RIT dorms. There's ones that are more like a rectangle, so they go the long way, and there's other ones that go like a square. From what I've heard, people definitely prefer the square ones aside from the rectangle, but it depends on the people who live in there and how they make use of the space. For example, I have a friend who he and his roommate are very good friends. So they kind of mix some furniture and they live more closely and they're comfortable with that. But others aren't so much like that. For example, my roommate and I, we're not super close. So we kind of just separate. We keep to ourselves. We respect each other's space. We have our own things. Our things don't really mesh with each other. So it all depends on your roommate, who your roommate is and the relationship you guys have. As for actually living with a roommate, it's not strange having a roommate as in someone he, you don't really know, you're not really familiar with. It's super easy to get um, used to. So it's not something that'll get in the way or cause conflict later on. On the other hand, sometimes there's no privacy because you're both always studying and doing things like that. Many people like to study in their rooms and that's also where they have their laptops. A lot of people bring in their stuff from home. So they have their PCs on their desk, they bring that. It can get weird sometimes because you're both studying there, but I mean, it's not, it's not that bad. As for floor mates, things are pretty peaceful. Most people keep to themselves, people don't really bother other people so they're not going to be like knocking on your door at 2 a.m. Ding dong. There are some situations of course in different buildings. I've had many friends tell me so many stories about things that have happened with their floor mates. Some of them are honestly a little, they're just questionable but others are a little funny and you know it all varies but for the most part people keep to themselves and yes when i say buildings some buildings do have some reputations over others keep that in mind when you're um, deciding on housing for rit or for any um, college actually another thing that happened in dorms is that the power went out and it was out for almost like two days we still have no power like nothing i can't charge anything here my fridge is turned off i have this little light and that's it or else it is so dark in this room and in the hallways there's only the emergency lights on like everything shut off it was it was not a fun shower time <laughs> the good thing though was that they allowed us to shower at the fitness center which isn't that far away so you could just carry your bag and things like that i didn't personally do it i like i i pushed through it and i showered in the cold and it was it was not fun it was, it was not the best two days and like sitting in the dark and with like a flashlight i had a backup flashlight bring a backup flashlight you might need that <laughs> There are RAs in our building. I don't know if they're called differently at, at other colleges, but they are the residence assistants or something like that. Be nice to your RAs. They, they come in clutch because I've been locked out of my room. So my RA had an extra key and they let me in, but just, just expect it to happen and, and be prepared. So have your RA's phone number, make sure you're good with your roommate. <music> 
As for the lounge or the floor living space, the common areas, ours are called lounges, but they're also known as kitchenettes. Our kitchenette isn't a really a kitchenette. It's more like a sink, sometimes a microwave, sometimes a dish rack, but there's usually just some sofas, perhaps a TV and a whiteboard. So people can just kind of chill in there, but there's not so much of like cooking space in dorms, mostly because you're expected to have a meal plan. So the community bathrooms from the girls' perspective are not bad whatsoever. From what I've heard about the guy bathrooms, <laughs> there can be incidents. If you follow the page RIT After Dark, I'm sure you might hear something here and there. Be weary of RIT After Dark, I'm just saying. But other than that, the toilets are always clean. As for the showers, the showers are pretty clean themselves. Overall, bathrooms are pretty clean. I've never had a problem, except for in my on my floor, the door hinge thingy broke, like the one that goes on the top it broke and it was stuck like that for maybe two days it was still open and closable but i, I mean I, I don't know it's just yeah. so dining the majority of the freshman students here on campus have some sort of meal plan dining dollars is basically that's part of your tuition where you get money to spend for the entire semester. For example, I have the, the meal plan that has some like $3,000 for the entire semester to spend on food. And I can use this at uh, mini marts that we have here. Basically, you can just spend it on food. If there's other things like paper towel or shampoo that you need, you can't buy that with your dining dollars. Other than that, I can use it for any dining area on campus. So I can use it at Ritz, at Gracie's, at the coffee shops, that beans, and I can buy anything and as much as I want. The grill station, I can get whatever I want from the grill station. It's not like meal swipes or you swipe once and you can get as much as you want. I know other colleges do that, but RIT does not. And personally, I don't see this as a con or a pro. It's not a bad thing. You can get whatever you want, but it's not always a good thing because some things are a little more costly than others. It's all up to you how much you want to spend how much you eat as well it all depends there are definitely a lot of options and there are multiple dining places across campus there's dining places on the dorm side on the academic side you always have somewhere to go for um, breakfast lunch and dinner every place has its different um time there's always an option for food and if not there are a lot of places that you can order takeout from that are off campus and they'll deliver to you so there's always that option Ah, a very, very good thing about the dorms that one, one that surprised me and that I realized is pretty unique to RIT is the fact that there are tunnels under the buildings. There is tunnels under every single dorm building that connect to each other. So you can go from one side of the dorms, which has a dining hall, to the complete other side of the dorms, which has an entire other dining hall, and you never step foot outside. This is amazing when it comes to the varying weather especially up here because it can be really cold the weather here is absolutely crazy it's mad windy it's always snowing i swear it snowed like every other day for like a solid two weeks and it just wouldn't stop snowing so being in the tunnels was really nice laundry is also in the tunnels one dining place is in the tunnels the post office um the place we call the corner store that's one of the mini marts. Some game rooms, which are starting to open up, and some kitchens. The availability to those kitchens vary. Um, it depends on the clubs you're in and things like that. But basically, all of that is in the tunnels, so that was also really, really nice. 
and there's vending machines. You can consider that a pro. I would consider that a total pro. A con though would be the washing machines. This can go for literally any washing machine room in those tunnels under any building, but they can be pretty, pretty faulty. For the most part, they're not always bad. There's just some few machines and they do take a while to fix, so it, it can be annoying. Now, I know a lot of people also t wanna know about like the livelihood of campus, what it's like to live there, the social life. First thing I'm gonna say is that it all depends on you, on what you decide to get into, the clubs you decide um, to get involved with, the events you participate in, the activities you participate in. For example, um, I've been the freshman representative for the Latin American Student Association Club. This semester, I've also been a part of um, volleyball intramurals. So that is also really, really fun. I get to make new friends and meet more people, compete against other people, but it's really fun. Aside from that, there's a bunch of other things that go around campus. Other clubs host things. Frats and sororities host things here. College campus organizations, for example, there's one that's called CAB, College Activities Board, I believe. So they do things like movie nights every Friday. I think this semester they did a bucket hat painting. I see you. A beanie hat decorating so you were able to stitch on patches and things like that and basically there's a whole bunch of things like that there is always something to do although some days can get boring as everybody starts to um, wind down and like sit themselves down to study and exams week comes up but even then there's something to do because the college knows that their students are stressed so there's always activities going on so campus is pretty lively it just depends on what you get involved in and what you decide to spend your time on. Now for the academic part of RIT. So in your classes, you definitely have a lot of options. There's something called perspectives as well as electives. So electives are literally anything you choose. There's this wine tasting class, some art classes, some pottery classes, some wellness classes, basically anything that you choose that isn't exactly always related to your major. And then you have your perspectives. It's more restricted in the classes you take because there is a science perspective, there's an ethics perspective, I think there's a history perspective, an art perspective, and there's more, which I cannot recall in the moment, but basically those are more focused to certain areas of study. That way you actually diversify your education. So even if you're a math major, um, you're required to take a science major so you can look more into that. This also helps so that you kind of begin to see what kind of career you want to take. So you know what you like and you dip into these things. Maybe you actually like this topic a lot more than what you initially went for. These classes I find to be pretty helpful. You also have an immersion that you have to take. An immersion is only three classes. It's basically an addition to your major. It's less than a minor. And your immersion cannot be something super related to your original major. For example, since I'm biochemistry, I cannot have my immersion be in just chemistry. It could be in business, so it could be like science and business, or it can be art, so it can be like science and art. So there's also that that you get here at RIT with your major. As for a minor, a minor is five classes, but of course you're also gonna do your um, immersion. The good thing about that though is that you can knock out classes for your minor with your immersion, if you just add two more classes to your immersion, well then you have a minor and you knock out both. As for your major, the really good thing and the thing that I've never heard about before is that you can innovate your own major so you can customize it. There are a lot of majors that are set in stone. For example, chemistry or biology or applied math or business like marketing or business administration, business management. With customizing your major, you can adjust that. 
to something that you want. For example, let's pretend this is not a major, biochemistry. If I wanted to do biology and chemistry together, I would be able to do that. And I could even integrate some sort of art aspect into that and that could count as a major. Like RIT will help you put that together and create your own major, which brings a lot of freedom into your education, which I also really, really like. So you could find that as a pro. And if you don't know what major you want to choose, you also have an option for that. And that is called the Exploration Program. Many of the colleges here, and I say colleges because there's like the College of Science, the College of Engineering within our RIT college. So many of the colleges have exploratory programs. They expose you to many subjects within the majors. If I know I wanna get into science, but I don't know if I like biology more, neuroscience more, the psychology, or social sciences, or perhaps life sciences, they can put you in this program and you can explore all of them and you end up focusing, focusing, and focusing more so you are led to choose a major in the end. Another good thing about the major thing is that you don't have to declare it until your second year with these exploratory programs. And even then for anybody, exploratory or not exploratory, you can end up changing your major even up to your fourth year. Of course, you'd have to talk with your advisor with that, see a new plan and things like that, but it is possible. As for the homework load, I like to say that it is major dependent. For example, <clears throat> business majors. Some majors have a lot less work than others. I'm not hating on them, I promise. For example, sometimes business majors do not have a lot of written work and like lab reports due and homework assignments and textbook readings and things like that. Their kind of work is different from people who are in a biochemistry major like myself or versus an art major. They have to do more paintings and research and like writing papers versus us who have to work in the lab and things like that. So it all depends on your major. But for the most part, everybody always has some assignment to do. There's always exams, quizzes, and like homeworks. As for like my science career, last semester was a little more intense because I was taking eight classes as um, this semester I'm only taking six. And this semester is a little bit easier on the homework load but it is more intense on the material load since I'm taking like organic chemistry and calculus. But of course, that's just my major. It all depends on you as well and how well you grasp material. But overall, the workload here isn't unmanageable unless you don't stay on top of it because the second that you start relaxing and being a little too lax, it is really easy to let all that work fall on top of you and you end up getting behind. As for textbooks, programs, and softwares, some teachers do use the textbook because they use the problems from the textbook. Some teachers mostly just use online. I have a teacher that is strictly online and then I have another teacher who gives us like paper homework. So it all varies. Okay, another big one is transportation and also the surrounding area of Henrietta and things to do off campus. So Rochester from here, like RIT itself is maybe like 30 minutes away. So if you have a car, that's not bad at all. As for transportation, a lot of people here use skateboards, bikes, scooters. I've seen some people with hoverboards. Um, I have seen a dude with like those toy cars you used to get from Toys R Us, you know, for like little kids and they've totally modified it and they're just like driving around campus. I've seen people with like mini motorcycles as well. It's just really funny. For the most part, people just use their bikes. There are bike paths separate from the walking path, which is the main one down the campus, which you guys can also see in my vlogs. You guys can see the campus, what it's like, if you guys just skip around that, you can also see the livelihood of the campus and the kinds of activities that go on, things that I've been a part of. But aside from that, there are shuttles. So there's two bus stops. One of them just picks you up and brings you like around the campus. So it brings you to dorm side, to academic side. And then there's one that it also passes by there, but it takes you to like the apartments or off campus as well. There is a bus that is around all the time, even on weekends, and it'll take you to off campus where like Walmart, Wegmans, a mall. There is a Dave and Buster's. There's a laser place nearby. I've been to an escape room place. There's like this, this parkour place, a lot of dining areas. So like Red Lobster, Olive Garden, a bunch of fast food places. So there's definitely a lot. You just have to go out there and explore. I haven't been out there too, too much but there is definitely that. Otherwise, it's just a lot, a lot of walking. <laughs> 
So that's what I have in preparation for this video. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you guys have any more questions, do not be afraid to comment them. I will do my best to make another video to answer all your questions. Anything, I am happy to answer. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Morgan out.